Hi there, I'm Professor Juris and I wanted to make you a quick video and talk about the Sabatier process. Now the Sabatier process is referring to paper and if we look at solarization, solarization is the process that refers to film um, and being film that has been grossly overexposed is considered to be solarized and we'll show you a few examples of that later in the video. Um, by Minor White and Ansel Adams. But to start with, what I want to talk about um, is the process. And the classic textbook example of Sabatier is to take your photographic print and when it's sitting in the tray of developer, when it's almost all the way developed or fully developed, you would take a, a small light and re-expose the paper while it's still sitting in the developer. Um, if you have your own dark room and you're doing it that way, the thing you want to look for is to make sure there's no air bubbles or, you know, air bells on top of the print when you um, flash it with light. And after you flashed it with light, um, you would continue to agitate it and develop it for, say, another minute and then go ahead and stop it and uh, fix the print. So it's a print that's been in the developer. Now, we can't really do that in a school situation when there's a lot of students in a dark room. You can't set off a flash or, you know, turn a handheld light on. Um, you could simply do this again with the light bulb that you flick a switch on and off, or you can, you know, I've seen people even do it in their dark rooms by flipping the room lights on and off. Um, a small handheld flash held maybe about three feet above the paper and popping the, the um, test button on the back will um, give you a uh, Sabatier print. But um, we've come up with another way to do it in a school situation. We like to set up one enlarger and use that enlarger to um, re-expose the print after it's been developed. So there's um, two terms that I want to, to explain to you and we'll show you these a little bit later again in the video, but um, it's important that you learn these two terms and understand them when we're talking about this process. Now. It's a given that at this point you already know how to go into the dark room and make a print, make a normal print. So the two terms that we want to acquaint ourselves with is live print and dead print. Okay, so live print is a print that has not been stopped or it has not been fixed. It has only been in the developer. So you developed it, but you have not put it in stop bath and you have not put it in developer. And the term dead print. Um, simply means that the print will not no longer do anything because it's been developed, stopped, and fixed. So it's a dead print. It's ready to go into the wash. Um, make, make sure you understand the difference between a live print and dead print because I'll be talking about those in this video. So to start with, what you want to do is set up your enlarger like you normally would um, and go ahead and make a print and do your test, tests on it and everything. And it's a good idea to follow through and just actually make a print that's a dead print completely. Go through, develop it, stop it, fix it, put it in the wash. And you're gonna keep that print as a reference print. So that print, we're done with it, but we just wanna have a nice print, the best print you could possibly make. Now, once we've made that print and we have a reference print, which you're gonna go back in in order to Sabatier a print, you're gonna go um, make a print at the same time that you made the grade print um, put it in the developer, and then when it's fully developed, what you're going to do is put it on a piece of plexiglass and squeegee it off. So it has not been in the stop bath yet. It has not been in a fixer. It is still a live print. And at that point, we're going to take it over to enlarger. Um, and I, when I do this in class, I like to use enlarger station number one. And that's the only enlarger um, that I want you to re-expose your print with or sabatier your print with. And that enlarger is set up. Um, just as you would make a contact sheet. The negative carrier is in the enlarger. Um, there's no negative in it. The enlarger is placed up very high. Um, the light is focused, so we have a focus light projecting down on the baseboard of the enlarger. And then we like to do it with our lens wide open. Now, one of the things I have found over the years of doing this is that a, a very bright light that's for a short amount of time um, will give you the best um, Sabatier prints. If you dim the light down and do it for a long time, they tend to be flat and muddy. So we're looking for a very fast time with a very bright light, hence a flash works very good if you're doing this by yourself or alone in the dark room sometime, in your own dark room. You can just set off a pop flash about three feet above the print and they come out gorgeous. But what we're gonna do then is we're gonna take our print, it's been in the developer, it's fully developed, we're gonna put it on a piece of 
plexiglass. We're going to squeegee it off and then we're going to take it over to enlarger station number one where we have the enlarger all set up to say make a contact sheet and we're going to set the timer at maybe two seconds to start with and we're going to put our piece of plexiglass under the enlarger where we know the light's going to hit. Um, I like to put mine on an angle so the bottom of the piece of plexiglass would be here, the top would be here, so the piece of plexiglass is a little bit on an angle. And the reason I do that is um, a number of people suggest that it um, amplifies the Mackie lines in the print. And the Mackie lines are basically the, the, the lines that are created between the high contrast areas and the low contrast areas, or the high density areas and the negative and the low, low density areas. So there's a line right there and the developer will intermix in there when you're making the print and create more of a line or almost um, like what we might consider to be, but it's not, but consider it like a 3D effect. So there's a, a difference in the density than in the print right at that area where the Mackie lines are created or em emphasized is a better word. So um, what we're gonna do is put it under the enlarger, pop it with light, and then we're gonna take it back to the developer. We'll take it off our piece of plexiglass, um, put it in a developer and we want to make sure we develop it for at least another minute. Now if it turns black, <coughs> excuse me, if it turns black right away, like the whole thing just gets way black, then you've given it too much light. Um, if you don't see anything, then you haven't given it enough light. So the key is with this process um, to give it just the right amount of light and then make sure you develop it for, again, at least another minute. And the reason we want to develop it for at least another minute is because we want those tones, the subtle tones, the, the dark tones, we want those all to be able to develop up. And once we've done that, we'll go ahead and stop the print then and fix the print. And then that becomes a dead print. So we're doing this to a live print. Um, let me give you a, a rundown one more time. We're going to make a print under the enlarger. Um, and this, this is the one that we're going to sabatier. Um, we're going to make that print. We're going to put it in developer, develop it up. We're going to lay that print on a piece of plexiglass, squeegee off the face of it so it's emulsion side up. We're looking at the print on the piece of plexiglass. We're going to put that piece of plexiglass um, under the enlarger. We're going to pop it with a second or two or light um, with the lens wide open. Make sure the whole print gets covered. We're going to put that print back into the developer and develop it up for a minute. Um, and then we'll go into the stop bath and fixer and so forth. Now these will come out different almost every time you do them depending upon how much developers in the paper, um, et cetera, et cetera. So you, it's not like you can make 30 of the, that look exactly the same. They will look a little bit different every time. So, you know, working with the same print until you get one you like is really important. Um, okay, well, let's, let's look at some on my computer now this, to see some examples of some I've done and some other people have done. Um, thank you. Okay, as I promised, I wanted to take a couple quick looks at a couple solarizations before we get into looking at Sabatier. So this one here is by Minor White, um, 1955, and it's called Black Sun. And we can see the sun up here. It was nice and bright, but um, what happens is he exposed this film so long that it um, it becomes solarized. So the, um, the light areas become darker. Um, like you can see in here, and generally um, dark areas will become lighter. So uh, these these areas were probably dark, and they still look um, you know a little bit dark. So this wasn't a gross um, solarization where it's done so it grossly impacts the film, but um, it has been done. So um, this also works with um, cyanotype process for those of you that may be making cyanotype prints. If you're doing them in the sun, it's very easy to solarize them where they start to reverse themselves. Let's look at another one. Okay, so here's another example of um, solarization. And this one is, uh, again, by Ansel Adams. And you can see back here where the sun actually... Um, it's so overexposed that it um, it actually turns black as a dot. And this was taken in 1939. Now one of the things that happens with solarization or if you're overexposing um, your film, you'll generally be giving more exposure to the shadow areas, which um, in a contrast you seem like you can see the sun is so low here and it's going down. This must have been a fairly contrasty scene. In other words, this tree 
to the normal eye would have looked really dark right here and you probably wouldn't have been able to see all the little detail that's going on here but because of giving more exposure this is an overexposed negative um, Adams was able to capture the detail um, and that's why there's so much little detail in here for a scene that would normally be dark but the uh, the sky has become dark and the Sun is actually has a black spot in it so that's an example of um, solarization on the film So this is a Sabatier process um, that I made probably around um, 1989, 1990, um, and it's titled The Cage Where I Met Myself. And um, one of the things we could see going on in here is look at the sky has turned, um, you know, totally dark. There's some reversal of highlights going on in my shirt, um, on my skin and stuff. And this is actually a, a good example of... Um, what you're looking for, what you're trying to create in the print. And this was taken with a, a Hasselblad camera. So it's a two and a quarter square negative um, and a standard uh, fiber based print that uh, has been sabatiered. Here's another um, example of sabatier, and this was done around 1994. Um, while I was finishing up my uh, Master of Fine Arts degree at The Ohio State University. Uh, this was from the series of photographs called Portraits from the Dark Lodge. And um, this particular photograph was called Eugene's Last Concerto. Um, and um, taken with a Hasselblad camera. These were all printed on um, 16 by 20 paper and they were printed as 14 by 14 size images. Now the the lines that are around here in the perimeter um, are an example of if you take a scribe, um, something that's like a sharp sewing needle, or and you work on the emulsion side. And I actually scratched away the emulsion in order to get these uh, to get these lines. Now, once you do it, you can't go back. But I just wanted to um, to show you that I did a lot of work with a, a scribe on a lot of the negatives from this Dark Lodge series, but. Um, just a straight up um, sabatier print where it's uh, laid down on a piece of plexiglass, squeegeed off and re-exposed under the enlarger. And you can see the kind of image reversal that's going on here that, um, you know, in parts of the areas my skin tones are getting very dark and s some parts it stays very light. Um, so it's basically an, an uncontrolled sabatier print. Okay, this photograph um, was titled uh, Slow Dance, and it was taken around 1984, I think, and it's done with a view camera. And um, what I wanted to do here with this um, is actually show you an example of the print um, that was made and then a print that had been sabatiered. Um, so the print on the left is what the normal print would look like um, when I went and made a, a normal fiber-based print, and then this is the fiber-based print where I actually re-exposed it to uh, white light under the enlarger so you could see kind of the effects um, I really like the, the effects going on in the window blind right here and and the shadow area I mean this this photograph looks spiritual or ghostly on the left here but um, if you add the sabat or yeah the sabatier to it um, notice the the way that it looks even more so and um, it has this glow going on to it and that's kind of what you're looking for And here's another one of mine from around 1984. This is a figure study in the woods. And I really like the way that, um, you know, this print came out so bad he ate. It, um, the sky became very dark and the trees um, very rich. Now this print to begin with was somewhat contrasty. So it was a, a somewhat contrasty print. And that's one thing I wanted to point out in, um, in this video was that, you know, working with prints that are, more contrasty um, tend to, I think, sabatier um, better than a print that's just a flat print. So, you, if you make when you're making your your print, you might want to crank a lot of uh, magenta in there, crank it up to a number five contrast, or if you're using graded papers, use a high grade contrast paper, and that'll um, actually help you produce prints that look more like this, where the blacks are really rich and they everything just glistens. And here's another um, photograph from my stream bed series that I did um, both at Youngstown State and at The Ohio State University. But um, 
This print is just mildly um, sabatier, so it doesn't have a, a very heavy sabatier, especially in the image and so forth. And again, sometimes this is just how they come out. Um, the sky came out really black up here, and the tree looks gorgeous, but the uh, the figure itself um, doesn't have like a lot of sabatier to it. So what I might do if I had an image like this is I may go back and um, you know try to re make another one and re-expose it a little bit longer to try to get a little bit more sabatier going on in the figure and if I did that and I found out that I was getting too much up here what I could do is I could actually block you know use dodging to block part of this image up here um, I would still want to sabatier it a little bit but I you know want to maybe block part of the time so I give this area more give this give this print in other words the same time that you gave it to create this print if you're making a new one but then add a whole nother click of light uh, another unit of light to so you're adding double down here than what you got up here and that'll um, you know help create more sabatier going on in here and finally I'm going to end with this image today and um, this image will kind of lead us into the um, the next video that we're gonna have about um, toning and uh, this photograph was uh, taken with a Hasselblad and this this has everything in it this has the whole kitchen sink this is a, a double exposure that was done in camera with the Hasselblad um, and then it's been sabatier and then it's been split toned um, in selenium toner which is hence you get the pinkish color so anyway I hope you like this video if you like this video please give me a thumbs up please hit the subscribe button and uh, follow my channel and there's a lot more videos coming thank you get out there and take some pictures